Okay. Heidi ho, everyone. Uh, just um, putting a different picture in the handout. And I thought I had enough time, but evidently I don't. Uh, I'll do it afterwards. So, hi, everyone. Uh, today we're going to be working on uh, adding stenciling to uh, enamels. And if you've done any kind of enamel work before, um, this is a nice addition to, um, to your enamel skills or techniques. Um, let me I'd make sure that you guys, let's see here. Sorry, my train of thought is, okay. I just wanted to make sure my laptop was up with the um, with the demo so I can kind of keep an eye on comments because I don't really um, I'm not able really to read the comments very well on my cell phone as opposed to the laptop so that's kind of a helpful thing um, okay so I'm gonna show you uh, some of the samples that I have created and then we're going to, uh, I'll discuss the different kinds of materials that you need, uh, tools and such, and uh, we'll go from there. So I am going to uh, turn the camera down here. Oh, hi. See, now I can see all your comments on the laptop. All right. Hello. Monica, Wendy, Lorraine, and Renee. Hi, you guys. I'm glad you're here. You finally caught one of the lives, finally, huh, Lorraine? <laughs> good, good. All right. Okay, so here are some of the examples that I prepared. Hey, Deb. And um, there's a variety. Of, of different patterns. You can make all kinds of different things depending on the types of stencils that you have. Uh, and, and I believe you can use just about any kind of stencil. Um, I will show you uh, the kind that I use, uh, but you're certainly not limited to that, or to those, I should say. Um, the stenciling is kind of fun when you can incorporate different colors uh, like in here, uh, you can uh, maybe put too much enamel powder on or maybe not enough. That's something that you kind of have to play around with a little bit um, to see, you know, what what amount works best for you. But I really like the ones that you um, incorporate more color in, but just a single color like this can be very pretty as well. So, um all right, so I'm going to set these aside, and I'll go over some of the materials. Uh, let's see. Let's not crash boom bang here. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, uh, the stencils that I'm using today are put out by Eurotool, and um, Eugenia Chan who makes a lot of different tools, came up with these little stencils. And they are sold in packs of five. And there are they come with a protective coating on the, on the acrylic stencil. And you have to peel that off. It can be a little bit tricky, but, um, but you can do that. You can peel off the, the coating. And there are several different theme sets. Um, I think there's four of them and they all have a, a different theme in there, but there's a nice variety. And I hap happen to have an extra package that I bought um, and these are not used that I, I guess I bought a duplicate. So if somebody wants a set or this set, um, I will uh, sell it for ten dollars plus four dollars shipping uh, if you want it you can find these on Amazon uh, I think they're selling them for like eighteen dollars though I mean you may be able to get them at a better price somewhere else but um, 
and I think they only have a couple uh, choices. But some of the, um, I, I think most of the jewelry supply uh, companies uh, carry these as well. So those are made specifically for enameling. And uh, I will also mention, and it's in the notes, that on Etsy there's a lady called Pearly Carpel. She uh, has a huge uh, site for enamels and enamel products uh, on her site. And she has two really cute sets. They come like in a little book, uh, like a little binder that you can uh, pull out this individual stencils. And they're, they're very cute. They're a little on the pricey side, but um, there's a lot of really cute styles. So, um, you know, th th there's lots of things to choose from. Okay, so you need the stencils or some sort of stencil. I think that it's important to have a fairly rigid stencil. Uh, I, I know there's stencils for other crafts and uh, they may be a little bit too flimsy because you have to lift, once you put the enamel on your piece, which I'll show you, uh, you have to lift up the stencil and if they're very floppy, that could be kind of disastrous. So. Um, you know, um, you uh, you have to be careful with whatever stencils you choose. Okay, you will need an enamel sifter. Uh, you will need, this is handy. This is a little spatula, also a Eugenia Chan product um, distributed by Eurotool, but there again, I think you can find these uh, at various places. Uh, this is a piece that you, you'll see me work with it, but you move your piece around without grabbing it by the edges. So it's a handy little thing, and it's relatively inexpensive, so, so that's a nice thing to have. Also, another nice thing to have, you don't have to have it, but it's kind of nice, and this is a line sifter. Uh, you may have one of these already if you are into enameling a lot. But this is nice for, for really tight little spaces if you want to introduce some different color. Um, so that's kind of nice. They sell these in uh, a metal, which is this one. And they also have one in plastic. And they also have different hole sizes on here. So be aware of that. You want a small hole on this. Otherwise, the enamel pours out too quickly. And I'll show you how I use this as we go along but that's a nice thing to have um, you will need clear fire this is let's see here this is from Thompson enamel this is kind of like a an adhesive of sorts you mix this uh, into another container uh, which is this uh, this is a good thing you can put it in other uh, spray bottles but this is kind of nice um, but when you mix this you you do 50 uh, 50 percent clear fire and 50 percent distilled water so uh, that you would put in here okay so you need that it's sort of like an adhesive kind of gluey kind of thing um, that you will need a tripod a metal tripod um, if you have not purchased a tripod, I would strongly sec uh, recommend that you get a nine inch length. They come in, I think, six, six inch and nine inch. Uh, get the tallest one, the nine inch. So that way you can get your, uh, your torch underneath there uh, and you have a little bit more room. So that's just a uh, little word of advice. Uh, I, I had a six inch one and I just thought it was a little bit too confining. So, uh, and I'm also actually going to set this up on a couple of bricks. So I guess if you already have a six inch and you want to set it up on bricks, you could do that too. I'm just saying this for people who haven't purchased one already, that this would be the one to get. So you'll need that. And you'll also need um, some kind of a torch basket or trivet. Um, these by Pearly Carpel that I mentioned on Etsy, these fit really nicely 
in the top of your um, tripod. So you don't have to have the mesh screen on here if you have one of these, they fit. Uh, a normal enamel tripod will fall right through it and that's why you would need the uh, mesh screen. So this kind of eliminates, eliminates the need for that. Also, um, she's got a sale going on. She has sales quite often, but she has a sale going on right now and um, these things are on sale on her Etsy site. Um, and then this is another Eugenia Chan invention. This is a torch basket and you just set that right inside the tripod and that you can just put your piece in there and fire from below. So it's kind of a neat, neat thing. Okay, so you need some sort of uh, tripod and tools to go with it. Okay, uh, what else? I am going to be torch firing my first pieces uh, with the immersion method, which I'll show you. Uh, and then, but you could do it on the tripod as well. But I, I'm a big fan of the immersion method because you don't have to clean your metal first or any of that stuff. So, um, so that's how I'm going to do it. And you can watch, and then we will um, use the tripod for the stenciling part of of the firing. Okay. Hey Judy. Hi Nancy. Thanks for joining me. Okay. All right. So. Then you need an assortment of um, enamels, and let's see what else. You need your blanks. I have um, some copper blanks here, a variety of shapes. You can use whatever you have, or you can just cut squares or rectangles, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. And then uh, I pop a hole in them because I'm going to be doing the immersion method to get the first coat on them and uh, that that helps a lot okay all right so let's see here I'll move some of this stuff out of the way and it, if you have questions or comments just feel free and i will check them periodically Let me get this stuff out of my way here all right so the first thing i'm going to do is lay down a paper towel and um just a piece of scrap paper that I have and I'm going to oh no I'm not ready for this part yet I'm going to do some uh, I'll torch fire a couple of pieces so you'll see what that's all about so I'm gonna move the camera and I'm gonna change chairs and I'm also gonna turn on my exhaust fan well, bear with me just a second All right, so I'm changing chairs to come over to the torching area. And I have, I don't need the tripod yet, so I'll get that out of my way. Um, I have a uh, propane canister and a hothead torch that I'm gonna use for the immersion method. It's going to be loud. Uh, I'm not going to be doing much of it, but uh, just for the sake of people who haven't seen this done before, um, I'll do a couple of pieces and then we will uh, do the stenciling on top of them. I always start with a coat of white, uh, opaque white, and then I'm going to choose my background color. And that's always kind of a, I don't know, you know, some, sometimes I'm not sure what to pick because um, I don't always think stuff out ahead of time, so that can be a problem. Um, but we'll do a couple of different things. Oh, maybe the mint. Let's do the mint. All right, so I'm gonna light my torch and 
Like I said, it's going to be loud, so I'll try to be as brief as possible so that you can uh, hear me. But what I'm going to do is I have a pair of utility pliers that I always have by my side when I torch. I have uh, a skinny mandrel that will fit through the hole of the, the metal that I'm going to use. And basically what I'm doing is I'm putting the copper piece on the mandrel and then I'm going to heat it up till it's red hot and then I'm going to dunk it quickly into the enamel powder trying to dredge it in there and get it covered completely um, as quickly as possible because the metal cools off uh, amazingly fast. I mean it's not uh, cool like for to the touch but it's cool enough that the metal won't or the enamel won't stick to the metal. So it has to be very hot um, when you want to apply the metal or the enamel. Okay, so I will show you and then we'll talk. We'll discuss. All right, so I'm lighting the torch. The proper way to light a hothead torch is right at the lower lip of the torch head. I've got enamel stuck on this mandrel, so I'm going to relight the torch. I'm going to heat up the mandrel and then dunk it in water, in a little cup of water that I have here, and that'll crack all the enamel off of that. Okay, so you do that. I just stopped so that I could just show you that. Okay, I'll do another one, and then uh, I'll stop for any questions or comments. I covered up 
enamel over here because when you are heating this mandrel up with the enamel on there, sometimes it pops off and then those little enamel bits, the burn bits, get into your enamel powders and that's not good.
Okay. So I've got three pieces. And I am going to move them over to uh, a steel bench block. And they will cool off faster. These are these other two are probably cool, but just to make sure. Okay, I just set them on there. All right. Move my enamels back over here. Okay. All right, so you can see that they're on the bench block cooling off. All right. All right. Yeah, Deb, I, I do have a f just a few enamels. <laughs> um, I, I'm very fortunate. I have a, a good friend who um, is addicted as me with all this stuff, and uh, we share. We, we buy things together, and uh, we split them up together, and it's a lot more affordable, and it makes it uh, easier for me to uh, have more, more colors, more color choices. Yeah, um, it, it's it would be easy to drop them if you're not extremely careful. Um, but uh, you do it one time, <laughs> you won't do it again, I don't think. All right, Lorraine, you're asking, when I crack and clean the rod with the water, does that become unusable? Yes, it, it pretty much is. It's like little black crispy bits on there, so um, that's not anything, not anything worth saving. I usually let it sit in the bottom of the jar, you know, the glass jar, and then when the jar is dry or whatever, when the water's gone, I just dump it in the trash. So, so that's that. Um, all right. Uh, Okay, all right. So we've got our enamels, our pieces. These are cooled. It's amazing how quickly that uh, block cools those things off. But got good coverage on this. This was an opaque, uh, a mint color. This, this is a transparent. Uh, this is the lime, lime yellow. I like this one a lot. It's uh, pretty color. And then this is the, uh, what was this? This is foxglove purple and opaque also. It's a really pretty color. Okay. So when you are doing the hardest, the hardest part of all of this stuff is deciding what you want to do. I mean, that's where I struggle. Um, you know, it just takes a little bit of time to to figure that out for me. All right, I'm gonna put my water aside because I don't want to, I'm gonna cover it up actually. So I don't want any enamel powder floating around in my water. So, all right, so looking through my stencils here, um, I'm gonna start with the mint green. Ooh, it matches my glasses. Um, the mint green. And let me turn the camera down here. Yeah, Renee, that's the hardest part, at least for me. Uh, the hardest part is deciding on the design, the colors, the shapes, you know, all that kind of stuff. Once I get past that, then I'm good to go. But um, that to me, that's a struggle. There's lots of different, I don't know if you can see these very well. Um, lots of choices. I guess it just depends on what you like. I, I tend to like the ones that don't have a lot of, well, 
I'll say the ones I don't care for so much are the ones that have so much negative space in there. Um, it, it just seems like unless you could layer, which you, you can layer if you wanted to do that, um, you could fill that in. Otherwise, to me, it's just kind of like a blob of color. Um, I don't know what to do, what to do. Well, maybe I'll just do this. This one. Okay. So that'll that stencil is uh, will cover all of the enamel pretty well. I mean, all of the surface pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sprayer. And I would normally do this um, um, in a more protected area, so I don't the I don't want the, all the overspray to go all over the place. But I'm just going to hold my piece in my hand like this, <clears throat> and when you're using this uh, preval sprayer, you don't want to. Um, tip it, you don't want to shake it, or you don't want to tip it, you pretty much want to come on, you know, head on with it. So I'm going to tip my piece instead of the sprayer. And this just gives a very fine mist. That's all you want is a very fine mist of the spray. You don't want to saturate it. And I keep a damp uh, paper towel or rag by me so I can clean myself up. Oh, and I need to pick out my colors or color. I guess I'll just do one. Oh, boogers. What would be a nice color to go with that? Well, Hmm, what to do? I should have picked that out before I sprayed. I may have to respray. Put that color on top of it. That's close. Well, that was dumb. I should have figured that out ahead of time. Uh, um, hmm. That would be ugly. I'll just do the, uh, I'm going to have to spray that again. Ever so lightly. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. You sound like a moose when I sneeze. All right, so I'm going to put this over the piece. And I'm going to bring my enamel powder and my sifter over here. And I'm just going to do a solid color on this one. And I'm just scratching the handle of the sifter and filling in all the little spaces of the stencil. And this is where you, um, you're, you're kind of going to guess how much enamel you really need on here by doing a few of them. You'll get more of a feel because you can put too little or too much. And the other thing that I am notorious for is if I have several cans of enamel powder open and I'm uh, doing other colors, um, I will put the wrong color in the enamel, which is horrible. All right, so now this is the, you have to be very gingerly about lifting this straight up and there's your design on your stencil. And I can put that back in the Thing. However, the really important part here is picking it up 
which you have your little spatula, but you need to transfer it to an area that you're not going to knock into it. And also when you place it down, that you gently are sliding it because if you just tap it down a little bit, that enamel powder is going to just flow into the holes, the spaces that you don't want any enamel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trusty bench block here and just slide that on very carefully and just leave, an ed leave a hang over the edge a little bit so that way I can grab onto it without a problem. And I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes. All right, and then any enamel powder that is on the paper, I can just put back into the can, and we can go on to the next one. The spray, Ruth, the spray is sort of like an adhesive, kind of a glue. Uh, I've heard of people using hairspray also. Uh, I've never really tried that, but, um, you know, that may work as well. But you just need a light misting of it. You don't want to have it uh, soaked. Okay. All right. So let's pick out another. Um, you know, if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask when you're dealing with enamel powders, uh, I would certainly uh, encourage you to do so. I am, um, uh, I don't know. I, I, Sometimes if I'm working with it a lot, yes, I will put a mask on, but you don't want to be breathing all those little grains of, of enamel dust or enamels. Um, that would be bad for you. So um, I would be cautious. All right, but I'm just doing a few here just for example, so I'm not gonna do that today. Um, let's see here. I, I think I'd like to do this flower. I don't know. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? Okay. I may just do white on top of here. Maybe white with a little bit of green for the stem. Or maybe I should do yellow. I'll try yellow. This I have, this is an opaque, this is lemon yellow. And I just use the same sifter, but I make sure that I've knocked any uh, enamel out of that. And I want to put this away with the lid on it so I don't accidentally knock it over. That would be bad. All right, so I'm going to get, um, I've got the yellow, and I think... I will use, now where did I put that? Just had it. More green mint. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm going to use bitter green. Oh, no. Well, we'll see what happens since this is already green. I guess I don't really even have to put it. No, I do have to to define it. Okay. What a conundrum. Um... Yeah, I don't have any of the other green by me. So let's see what happens with the uh, with the bitter green on top of the yellow or the lime yellow. All right, so I need to spray this very lightly. Oh, that was a little too much. All right, get my little spatula. And I've got my flower. I don't know what kind of flower that is, but it's pretty. And I think I will just tilt it to the side a little bit. I'm holding down my stencil with my two other fingers. And I'm gonna grab some yellow. This is the lemon yellow. 
I'm going to scratch the enamel on it. And I think for the stem, I'm going to use the line sifter. So you just scoop. Can you see that? You just scoop the sifter with the enamel. And you do the same thing, scratching to fill it up. Okay, and now very carefully, I'm going to lift straight up. And since I have two colors on here, I'm not dumping it in the cans because they're mixed now. And that will go in my mixed container. Now, if you get little grains, little stray grains that you don't, you know, that you want to remove, I take a very fine paintbrush uh, and dampen the tip a little bit and kind of move off that extra enamel. All right, so I'm going to leave well enough alone. So now I'm going to transfer this over to the bench block. It doesn't have to be a bench block, but it's just what I have here, so... Just trying to not disrupt it. All right, and I have a little container here that I keep all my mixed enamels in because that could be a, um, a counter enamel, you know, for another piece or so. Okay. All right, let's do one more. And let's see, maybe this one, or maybe I should do this bright blue one. Well, I might as well do both of them as long as I've got them, if you guys don't care. Um, all right, so the bright blue, I might do red on the bright blue. And we'll see how that happens. You know, sometimes I get lucky and I come up with a, a nice combo and other times it's like, what was I thinking? But you don't know unless you try stuff. I really tend to gravitate towards floral, uh, floral designs. But in this case, I may just do something kind of abstract. Hmm. Yeah, let's just do these little squares here, this little checkerboard. All right, I'm going to spray. There again, that was a little too much. I think I got my hand more than the piece. Okay. All right. So I'll put the checkerboard on here. I've got Victoria Red.
and lift up. That's pretty good. Any questions? Usually before I put these away, I will uh, wipe them off with a damp paper towel just to keep them dust free. And let's see. So I've got this one little, put this red back in the can. All right. I've got one more here. And what will I do for that? I think a little flower. You can kind of just move it around and see what, what the best area would be. All right. All right. Oh, I didn't pick my color out. All right. I'm going to put red away. And let's see here. Bear with me here while I put these away. All right, so on top of that purple, I think I'll do something different and do a copper green, which is really blue. I don't know why they call it copper green, but it's kind of a blue green, but it's pretty. I'll set this over. I think you guys are getting the idea. There's not too much to it. It's just a matter of having all the parts and pieces that you can play with all this stuff. Okay. Maybe just a skosh more. This is the hairiest part is lifting that up. And there's some spaces from um, the continued design that are on here that I don't want those on there. So with the dampened brush, I can just knock those off. All right. So I set this aside as well. Being careful not to, not to tap it, knock into it at all. And we're going to let those dry for a few minutes. And I've got a couple of pieces that I did right before um, uh, I came on. So I will fire those so you can see. And then just kind of wipe everything up with a damp cloth to uh, keep all that enamel powder from going into the air. We don't want that. Uh, we don't want to breathe that. Okay. All right, I'm going to move over to the other chair, and we will torch a couple. Now, getting them in the torch basket without knocking the enamel off is another trick. So... Here's one I did a little while ago. And I am going to 
place that very carefully. Sometimes the basket is better than the trivet, depending on the shape of the object. And for the squares, um, and, and sometimes for the rectangles, that torch basket seems to work better than the trivet. But the only trivets I have are the three-point trivets, and I'm going to order a four-point trivet to see if that makes uh, it any better. Or any easier so all right so we'll come back here and actually I think for this one I'm just gonna use because the, the hothead would really be in the way for this I mean I can take it off the only way I could use the hothead is if I took it off the, the clamp and um, came from below so this is making me nervous here. Okay, so what I'll do is hopefully get this positioned right. I think I'm gonna get this one out of my way because I don't like things with fire next to things that could possibly cause a fire. Or an explosion or something like that. We don't want that. All right, so I'm working on my heat proof surface here. And okay, you turn this on. You come from, oh, nope, not yet. What I wanted to do that I didn't do because, I mean, this is a nine inch trivet, but still for putting that can underneath, I could use a little more space. So I'm going to, ah, set this up like this. This moved a little bit. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try this again. Come from below. And just kind of circulating around the heat all the way around. I don't know that you can see this too well, but I'll show you the piece as soon as it's done. enameling is just so much fun. Uh, it, it's got so many things, uh, so many different techniques that you can use that makes it very versatile. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to take my torch basket out. You can see that in there. And I'm going to knock that piece out. I need to cool this off. This piece is very hot at the moment and the color will come out better as it cools. Ah! Okay. There we go. All right, I'll let that cool. Now the other piece is a heart shape, and I think I'll put this little trivet in here. I think I can get that to work in there. 
have to keep in mind, you know, that the trivet is hot, that I just, or the torch basket is hot, so it has to cool off before you're going to do another piece. All right, so now I'm going to do the heart. This was, I was a little messy with the uh, enamel on this one. I think I put too much on here, but, you know, it is what it is. So... At least you get the idea of, you know, what I'm doing here with the different trivets and uh, stuff. So, do this one. You know, I suppose you could put your pieces uh, on a hot plate after you sprayed them and added the enamel to them, but that's just one more thing that uh, another potential uh, possibility for the enamel to get knocked off. So uh, handling it as less as possible is the best, in my opinion. These torches are great for, for this method. All right, so, and it's gonna uh, lighten up as it cools off. And there again, that's hot. All right, let me check if there's any questions and then we'll go on to torch the rest of the pieces. Uh, Renee, I have never um, used the acetylene torch for this. I think it might be too hot, but, uh, you know, don't quote me on that because I'm not positive, but, but I do think it might be too hot for that. Um, okay. Oh, I'm glad I picked... Your favorite colors, Deb. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, did you remember my story, Deb, that I didn't take my purse? My husband went back in the house and got it uh, when, when our house burned down nine years ago. So, okay. Yeah, it is way cool, Janet. I think it is. It's uh, lots of fun. All right, so the first one I did was this one, this blue one here, <clears throat> which I could do in either the torch basket or, well, I'll, I'll do the tripod for that. I'll put that back up here. It's probably still hot, but I'll be very, very careful. You know, not only are the tripods hot, I mean, the uh, trivets are hot, but the tripod is very hot. So you have to keep that in mind when you're working around this stuff. All right, let's see. I hope that'll do it. All right. I think I'm in frame good enough. Get to see my flabby arms. I'm telling you, this getting old stuff really sucks. All right, so I'm gonna go back under here. And you're looking for the enamel to melt but you also, you know, it goes through a couple of different stages as it's melting. And you want to make sure that you get it nice and glossy and smooth. Uh, if it's dimply, you know, kind of like orange peel, it, that means it hasn't uh, been uh, fired quite enough. So you want it to 
be without that and nice and smooth. It has to cool to bring out the color. All right, uh, let's see. I could do, I think I'm going to need the torch basket for the square. I'll do that so that way this can cool in the meantime. Torch basket should be okay by now. I guess I should test it. Yes, it's fine. All right. So getting this in there without burning myself. Okay, stay. All right. I wish I had an overhead camera because you could see what I'm doing a little bit better. But, you know, I just don't think I can learn one more thing. I, I finally got a label maker the other day and I looked at the instructions and I said, I gave it to my husband and I said, here, you figure this out. My brain's on overload. And it was so simple. I was kind of ashamed of myself afterwards. Um, that I didn't bother to try to figure it out. But, oh well. Sometimes the technology stuff is, is a little overwhelming for me. It seems, it seems like that green kind of ran into each other. It looked good before I melted it, but We'll have to wait and see when it cools off how it looks, but right now I'm not liking it. But it was probably the prettiest one. Maybe it'll be all right, we'll see. All right, uh, now let's go back to the trivet. I suppose you could dunk these in water, I don't know, uh, between uses to cool them off. Um, I just never have tried that, but maybe I should, just to know. I mean, I would hope they wouldn't warp. I would think that that would be the only uh, bad thing that could happen. Okay, two more and then we'll talk. This is a, 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 a medium or technique or whatever that is pretty much instant gratification. Um, I, I like a lot of projects like that, that you don't have to slave over. Uh, you can get good results uh, relatively fast. Again, that'll take a few minutes to cool off. This one, I think I can manage to get on. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of difference in the color. Um, I should have put this on a different background, not green. Green on green, even though they were two very different colors, uh, I guess they're not different enough.
Okay. Then we're going to talk. I've got a lot to talk about. Okay. All right, I'm going to shut the fans off so you can hear better. Renee, where did I get my metal surface from? Well, I got it from the beadsmith some years back, and they don't carry it anymore. But I am sure you could find it on Amazon. Well, I shouldn't say that, but I'm pretty sure. Amazon has just about everything in the world. Um, some things you may pay a little more for. you got to shop around a little bit. But um, I'll look it up and see if they have it. But I'm pretty sure they do. All right, so let's talk about what we did here. Okay, so these are these are the things, and some came out okay, some came out not so great, but I kind of like this red and blue together this one like I was saying um, I should have chosen a different color green but I was too lazy to get up and get a different color so so that's that this one's probably the best this one came out good this one's kind of kind of blah and this one I think I put too much enamel on here because um, it's a little muddied this one's okay I could have done a little bit better job uh, adding the yellow to the flowers, but all in all, um, it's kind of a fun thing. The backs don't look so great, but, you know, nobody's really going to be seeing the ba back. Um, yeah, I, I think, Lorraine, I think you're right. I should have used less powder, and I should have gotten a finer brush. Uh, the brush I have is relatively fine, but evidently not fine enough, so I could have gotten in between those petals uh, a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit uh, cleaner in between the petals, like you're saying, sharper. I, I do. Um, yeah, I mean, all in all, I think they're okay, but um, they're not going to win any kind of prize. But, you know, it's just a matter of practicing, you know, doing this stuff um, regularly. And uh, you will get little sharp uh, pieces where the uh, copper piece touched on the trivet or the torch basket. So you should uh, grind those off. You can use a 
well, if you have an alundum stone, you could do that, but um, I personally don't care for those too much. But enamelists, the serious enamelists will have them and use them, and they probably love them because they're used to them. But you can take, um, I'm going to take my uh, my little micromotor here. I don't have my face shield on, so I'll be brief and just knock those little edges, those little rough edges off with that. Some people will clean the whole edge uh, of the piece, you know, and make it copper, you know, bring it back down to the copper. And that's a really um, pretty look. Uh, you could possibly uh, nick your uh, enamel on the front piece, but, um, you know, I've done it on several things, and, and it looks really nice to kind of reveal that that copper edge around there, but I would do that with water so that, um, you know, you're less likely to, to chip, chip uh, or mar that, uh, you know, the, the surface, the front surface of your enamel. So yeah, you know, it's, it's all kind of you know, subjective, really, you know, it's like whatever, whatever designs you choose, your colors, your, your colors are going to make the most, um, you know, you want colors that pop, you know, that, that look well together. Um, and, and some color choices aren't all that great, but, um, you know, you can, you can kind of play around with that. Um, you know, you, you could use the line sifter for the petals, Lorraine, if you wanted to. It's a little bit more work, but but you could do that. It might be cleaner, you know, to do that. Um, I have the uh, white coarse rubber wheel. I can't think of the name of it now. Uh, these I got from Euro Tool also. I don't know if it's Dedico or... Uh, I'll try to find out the name of these, uh, but I use this this white one a lot. I use it in the round and the um, the, the straight edge and the the uh, knife edge. I use them a lot. Uh, I I don't think they referred to it as a pumice wheel, but I would think that that would work, you know, because it does have some kind of grit in it. So maybe maybe that's what it is. But I'll try to find out. <coughs> All right. All right. Did I answer everybody's questions? <coughs> I hope so. All right. Sorry. All right. So that's using stencils on enamels. And I use the combination of the immersion method, uh, which I love. I, I, I just love the fact that you don't have to clean the copper. It could have Sharpie marker on it. It could have all kinds of uh, oxidation on it. And by putting it in the torch fire like that, it cleans it all off. So um, I, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, it is, Monica. It's a fun, it is a fun project. I, I think it is. Okay, so we have other business to discuss. We've um, we've just gone over the 1,000 mark in members in the group, uh, which I'm really, I'm really pleased. Uh, so we're going to have a little giveaway. And I was trying to think of what the prizes could be. And, you know, I, I just had this idea that maybe... It should be some of the demo pieces that um, that we've been doing because not everybody can do them. And, um, you know, I thought it would be kind of fun. So I put together enough for five prizes. We'll have five people uh, that will be winners. And I'm going to show you what is going to be awarded awarded <laughs> that cracks me up actually 
All right. So what I did was I took from several of the demos. Uh, I didn't have multiples of a lot of stuff, but uh, of these I did. So I put these in the in the uh, in the giveaway. So da da five prizes. So I hope you like them. Um, it is going to consist of an a paint pour skin on um, you know pendant. There will be a, a colored pencil pendant. There will be a decal on enameled pendant. There will be a set of three lampwork beads. Uh, some of them are different. Uh, there will be a lampwork heart. There will either be a blue one or a red one. I can't say which one you'll get, but it'll be either blue or red. Uh, you will get a genuine buffalo nickel. I think I'll stick in another one. There'll be two, so that way you can make a pair of earrings if you want it, or some buttons. Uh, it, then there'll be three world coins that you can make buttons with, and then there'll be a little copper dish that I made. So that's the contents. There'll be five winners. They each get the same stuff. Okay. So I hope, I hope that that is a satisfactory um, prize. Um, I don't know. I kind of had fun thinking about it and, um, you know, kind of looked through what I had five of. And, um, and they're, they're pretty much already done. You know, you don't have to make anything with them, although you could add, I'd like to see if you add things to them. I think that would be kind of, kind of fun. And if you make some buttons or earrings or whatever, but, uh, these are real Buffalo, Buffalo nickels. So don't spend it. <laughs> Make something cool with it. Uh, <laughs> what about the keys to my house? <laughs> oh dear, you're so funny. I would love to have each and every one of you over here, but uh, you know, it, it doesn't quite work that way. So anyway, so these are the things. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is do the number drawing again and... Uh, I guess we'll pick uh, a number one to 1,000. Um, I'm sure not everybody, not 1,000 people are going to enter. So I think we'll be safe within those parameters. One to 1,000 uh, in the group. Uh, I hope that you, I know it's kind of a big thing, but I would hope that when you post it, your number in the comments, um, that you will check that nobody else took that number. Um I, you know, I have no clue how many people will enter. Sometimes people are very responsive and sometimes they're not. Um, what I will do is free shipping for in the U.S. And if you are outside the U.S., I'll do, I'll split shipping with you because that can be uh, relatively pricey, but I'm willing to go halfway if you want to enter. So, um, you know, I don't feel that people from out of the U.S. should be penalized. Uh, but you know, it would be nice if we just split the, the shipping on that. So if that's agreeable to you guys, then I would go ahead and enter. Um, I will, uh, put a post out there with a picture of, of this stuff. And, uh, that will be the post to add your number to. Okay. Uh, yeah, it'll be a special post for this. So, <coughs> Just do me a favor and check that, like I said, check that the number hasn't already been taken. And um, and we'll go from there. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to leave this available till Friday, this coming Friday, August 3rd, I mean, August, September 3rd <clears throat> at 9 p.m. Central. I'll do a drawing. Uh, I'll put all the numbers in a hat or whatever, and I'll have my husband pick five, and then I will announce them. And then I will promptly mail them out on Monday morning. Um, what else? All right, so that's that. I've got to add a nickel to each one of these. So that way you have a pair. 
That'd be fun. And I'd like to see what you make with this stuff. If, <coughs> excuse me. Ah, okay. Um, so I will have the handout for today's project uh, available in just a few minutes. And um, I'm just going to change one of the pictures that are in the handout. But everything else is on there. I've got some resources. I think what I'm going to do is um, put the links to any products that you can get on Amazon if you want to get things on Amazon <coughs> on that same post if I can add them that way you don't have to go um, hunting for them um, and then uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do next week I'm kind of excited about that all right next week is gonna be resin and we're going to do a couple of different things with wildflowers, if you can see those. Um, this is resin that I bought on Amazon called Art Resin, and I really like it a lot. Um, Oh, am I close enough? Can you see it really well? It is, let me grab it. I was a big fan of ice resin, and I still like it, but I think I like this art resin even more. I don't know if you can see that. So it's two-part resin. So I got that on Amazon, and I got dried flowers on Amazon. Grab those too. Because I tried to find um, dried flowers in the local craft shops, and I could not. So I looked on Amazon, and I found a few variety packs of dried flowers different combinations like that so in case you want to pick some up you know and I don't know I don't know that you can do these projects with me while I do them but if this is something that interests you you can um, go ahead and get those things ahead of time um, the bezels were a little bit more of a challenge and I did find some on Etsy these are these are the ones that are just the the form they have no back plate on them so i kind of like that because you can see right through them i think that looks kind of cool but i also like these with the white resin on the background in just a, a regular bezel cup so either you can make some bezels you know you could do that yourself if you if you have the means to do that or you can buy the pre-made ones um I have not checked them out in the craft stores, honestly, lately. So you might want to find those. But anyway, I thought that was kind of good fun. I'll have to do it. Um, I'm going to have to make some ahead of time because these have to be made in two pours and they need 24 hours uh, a piece, you know, to, to cure. So I'll have some at the very beginning stage and some at the mid stage so that way you can see you know how the process is done okay so that's I think everything I've got for today guys um, so unless there's any other questions um, I'm gonna say goodbye and I will go ahead and post that stuff on the group page and uh, you know let's let's do another uh, giveaway at 1500 and see if we get 1,500 viewers uh, or members. And, and that would be kind of fun. We'll do it in 500 uh, increments. And uh, we, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I am going to have Nancy Harrington back here in a few weeks. She's going to do uh, dot painting, which uh, I think she's going to do a leather cuff, you know, painting the, the dot painting on leather cuffs and maybe a journal. I'm not really sure yet. 
but that'll be fun. I'll, I'm looking forward to having her back here. And I'm also scouting out for, um, uh, I think my friend Bonnie is uh, going to be, uh, maybe do some glass fusing. You know, she's she's a very good fuser, glass fuser, and maybe I can have her over here one day and she can kind of give you the ins and outs of that. Um, you know, I think that that would be fun. That's something, you know, I've dabbled in a little bit, but not really enough to show you guys anything substantial. So uh, I, I would say Bonnie can do that. She's our gal for that. So I think it might be kind of fun to introduce different people um, occasionally uh, to show different areas because, you know, I do a lot, but I don't do it all. So um, that way you're exposed to a lot of different things. So um, I think that'll be it then, guys. So thanks for being with me. I always enjoy having your company and I'll see you in the group. And remember to enter after I get that post up for the uh, for the uh, drawing, for the prize drawing. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.